What's up guys? I want to share this with you. Just listening to this Brian Denlinger video this morning while I'm drinking my coffee and I just hear him repeating the same false teachings, the same false interpretations of verses used to support his false doctrines. And I've talked about this before. Lots of other teachers do this. It's the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of heaven nonsense. I think maybe it was made popular by Schofield. And um, definitely Peter Ruckman taught it. And so it's taught by a lot of other people. I've said how the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, they're the exact same thing. They're used interchangeably by Jesus. You know, like, And... Um, I think Kingdom of Heaven is only mentioned in Matthew uh, because it was more written towards for the Jews. And um, I think because they were more touchy on God's name being used, I guess. Um, something like that. But it's just a figure of speech. Basically, God is thought of as in heaven. His throne is in heaven, even though he's omnipresent. But, uh, you know, it's said that God is in heaven. And so that's why the kingdom is of heaven, and the kingdom of God is the kingdom of heaven. It's the same thing, okay? It just takes a little bit of studying, uh, you know, it takes the Holy Spirit in you to understand this. But I don't really think it's very hard, especially when you see Jesus use them interchangeably. You can think, okay, it's the exact same thing, just different, you know, it's the, it's the same idea. But it's used to teach also this futurism this future thousand year reign on earth they say that's what the kingdom of heaven is so you see it's it's multi errors here but that's basically the the end of it is to get to to where there's it's another proof for them to teach their false futurism doctrine of a future millennial kingdom which is not true and it's not true that the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven are different things that, that one is a spiritual kingdom and one is a physical kingdom or whatever. False. But let's listen to this fool go over this again. The wicked, not just false converts, false prophets, they will try so hard to imitate Bible-believing Christianity. I mean, there are some guys with PhDs, master's degrees, whatever else, and they study Bible-believing Christianity. But I went back a little it. bit far, but it'll be Why? coming up. They're not born again. So they can parrot what they've learned in some seminary or Bible college or whatever else, but they don't get the mysteries. They'll get mixed up on the mysteries. <laughs> All right. But uh, the kingdom of God there in verse 10, see there you have um, in the gospels, there are two kingdoms mentioned, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is always 100% of the time, the time, Always a reference to a physical kingdom on the earth with its headquarters in Jerusalem that will be coming in in the Millennial Kingdom. I think it's 11 verse 12. Oops, I just messed up and instead of pausing the YouTube video, I paused the recording video, but I hope that works right. Anyways, he just said that the Kingdom of Heaven always represents the future Millennial Kingdom. <clears throat> False, there is no future Millennial Kingdom. That's a futurism doctrine. False doctrine. Let's continue. Let me just make sure of that quickly. Yes, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Okay, so the people say, well, that's heaven where God is. Nobody that's violent is going to take heaven by force from God. Okay. Uh, let's continue a little bit. It's talking about a physical kingdom on the earth. Kingdom of heaven only appears in the book of Matthew. Okay. I've went over this before. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. He says this can't be speaking of um, the spiritual kingdom of heaven, because it can't be ta physically taken by force. <laughs> He's taking this hardcore literally, okay? It's obviously figures of speech being used here, okay? It's saying that so many people are coming and getting baptized by John, it's like they're taking the kingdom of heaven by force because so many are rushing in to get in through there, to get into heaven, okay? And so it's it's actually like a good thing. I mean, there's so many people being converted. It's like they're represented as, you know, violently storming into heaven, like trying to, you know, 
to get saved, to come to, to come to repentance. Um, so yeah, it has nothing to do with some with some future physical millennial kingdom. Um, and again, he just said that most of the time, or that all the time, whatever the the kingdom of heaven speaks of a future millennial kingdom. But here it says the violent, the violent, um, take it by storm, like as if it was happening right then. So it wasn't speaking of some future kingdom. Okay. But it's talking about heaven and salvation in general. Okay. God's kingdom. You know, all of us who, who submit to Christ's lordship, we are part of his kingdom. Okay, but it's obviously, it's figure of speech, has nothing to do with anybody taking anything physically, literally, violently. Okay, so this fool doesn't get this. He's repeated it over and over and over again after years and years and years of studying. Because, I don't know, he has no discernment, he just reads this Ruckman garbage, and he's just not going to repent of this. You know, I don't even think he restudies things to, to see if the things that he's saying are true. He just continues to make new studies and teach new new errors and just repeats the old ones within those studies over and over again while making up new ones. And so, you know, this isn't even really about Denlinger. Like I said, Schofield taught it, Peter Ruckman taught it, Robert Breaker teaches it. All kinds of people teach this nonsense. But it needs to stop, and we need to see that it's wrong. Okay? You're, you're speaking as a fool not trying to understand what the Bible really teaches. I mean, it's really not that hard, folks. It's really not that hard. And it always, 100% of the time, refers to the kingdom that is coming, the millennial kingdom with Jesus in Jerusalem as you know, sitting there ruling and reigning for the thousand years. The kingdom of God, on the other hand... And again, there's no future millennial kingdom. Okay, let's just continue. Yeah. The kingdom of God can be both. It can be a reference to uh, the kingdom of heaven, but usually it's a reference to the spiritual kingdom, fellowship between us and the Lord. All right, um, and you can see there's a verse, I can't think of where it is right now, but it talks about, um, you know, that the time will come when the Jews are basically going to see, you know, Gentiles sitting down with, with, you know, Moses and Abraham and Isaac, you know, and all these fathers of the Jewish. In heaven, yeah, in heaven. People, and they're going to be sitting down in the kingdom of God, and the Jews are going to be thrust out. All right, so that's a reference to the kingdom of God being like the kingdom of heaven, okay? No. Why would... He's like, so again, he thinks they're sitting down and stuff, so this has to be like the physical reign on earth in the future. Uh, no, in heaven. It's pretty easy to understand, okay? Wow. You don't sit down in something spiritual. You're sitting down in something... Oh, oh, oh! You can't sit down in something spiritual. It has to be physical. Oh, my goodness. Come on, guys. You know better than this. I pray to God that my listeners or anybody who watches this video can clearly see what, I'm, what the point that I'm trying to make here and the error that this fool is teaching. You can't sit down on something in heaven? Doesn't it talk about God sitting on his throne in heaven? What a moron. Wow. Ooh, man. Man, 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 man. Lion to this thing of the kingdom of God here, being spiritual, you can go back to Romans chapter 14, just to show you here real, real quickly. Romans 14 verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, those are physical things. But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. All right. So when you read in the poll. So he says, I hate it when they do this too. I hate when they twist all these things. But it says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. And he says those are physical things. So the kingdom of God is the spiritual kingdom. That's the conclusion that he comes to. And the kingdom of heaven is the future physical, literal kingdom. Absolute insanity. Man, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Look at the context of that, Romans chapter 14. 
okay? He's saying that the kingdom of God is not about the ceremonial laws and stuff like it used to be, okay, for the Jews, to where you couldn't eat this, you couldn't drink that on these certain days or whatever, and there's all these strict rules. He's saying, no, it's all about, it's about serving Christ, it's about grace, okay? Paul's not trying to make any kind of point like what Denlinger's trying to make, okay? Because what Denlinger's saying is false. There is no future millennial kingdom. You guys need to get that through your head. And you need to realize that there is no rapture, and all this futurism stuff is nonsense. Realize that revelation is an allegory, okay? And there's, we need revelation, and it's an awesome, amazing book, okay? But there is no rapture. There's no future millennial kingdom, okay? And it's not sad to realize the truth that none of that stuff exists you know it's glorious and we should be grateful that christ is risen and we will be risen like him when we die and that's what our hope and that's what we look forward to okay we're going to be with christ and we're going to be with other believers in heaven and if you've trusted in Christ and right now you're saved, then I want to look at the commentaries just to see what some of them might say on Romans 14, 17. And I saw this here. Meat and drink. In observing distinctions between different kinds of food or making such observances a matter of conscience as the Jews did. Okay. He said, Moses did not prescribe any particular drink or prohibit any, but the Nazarites abstained from wine and all kinds of strong liquors, and it is not improbable that the Jews had invented some distinctions on this subject when they judged to be of imp on which they judged to be of importance. Hence it is said in Colossians, or Colossians 2.16, Let no man judge you in meat or drink. So you have to look at the context of this. Okay, Paul's not saying that the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom because meat and drink are physical things. It's absolute nonsense. Okay, He's saying that the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, it's all about grace. It's serving Christ with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. It's not about these observances and stuff like it was under the law in the Old Testament, basically. Okay, and I need to do another study on this to go through these verses more, maybe. Definitely, and I planned to for a long time, but I haven't gotten around to it, but Anyways, I've talked about it before. Denlinger just keeps saying the same stuff, and he'll continue to. I'm pretty sure, pretty confident that he'll never repent because, you see, if people give this up, then they're closer and closer to realizing that the millennial kingdom is false and that the rapture is false. And that's a whole system that comes crumbling down. And people have been teaching on this for years and years and years, and that would be a lot hard to swallow. But, uh, you know, it can happen by the grace of God. And I pray that it will for some people. And I'm glad that the Lord showed me this pretty early. Um, but, you know, I took time to carefully consider things and to, to research a lot. And I'm not saying that people who teach this stuff haven't researched a lot, but something's wrong here. Something is wrong. I mean, to say, to look at the verse that says the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence because the violent, you know, force their, their way in or whatever. To say that, to try to take that literally and physically like that, I mean, you're really not thinking. You're really not considering. And then to twist, you know, Romans 14, 17, that says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, and to try to use that to say that the kingdom of God isn't physical because meat and drink are physical things. And for Denlinger to say that people can't sit in heaven in a spiritual realm. Ay, 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 ay. Folks, and we see Jesus interchangeably using the kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God. And kingdom of heaven is only used in the book of Matthew, which has a lot of things that are, are specifically pointed towards Jews to, to help Jews see that Jesus was the Messiah. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, it's, just, it's just unexcusable after so many years of studying and teaching. Because I, I really, I think, I think, you know, I don't know how everybody is, but I really got this feeling like these people don't go over their own beliefs and question their own beliefs and restudy things that they have felt certain on for a while. You know, 
they just feel so comfortable with what they've taught. They got to a point to where they thought this is right, and they just go on and learn new things, or try to learn new things, or teach new things, new false doctrines, and they're just they're not they're not even going to consider these things. But anyway, that's all. God bless.